نحن والله ندعو إلى منهج السلف الصالح إلى كتاب الله وسنة رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام ونحتج في عقائدنا وعبادتنا ومواقفنا من الحاس والحكام والمحكومين والجماعات والفرق على كتاب الله وعلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسمح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن حفظ الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتفاتها وكل محتفة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار It's my pleasure to meet or to stick with my brothers over the phone the brothers from Singapore and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless them and to give them to peace and that which they have organized. Indeed, this is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal that we are presently in the month of Ramadan for the year 1437. And by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we have reached this month, this month of Malfira, this month of forgiveness, this month of mercy, this month that Allah Azza wa Jal has assisted his ibad, his servant, in worshipping him and gaining nearness to him and seeking his endless forgiveness. As Allah Azza wa Jal said about himself, and this is something that it is upon the believers to understand and reflect over. يريد الله بكم اليسرى ولا يريد بكم العسر Allah wants ease for you and he does not want difficulty for you. This is our Lord Tabarak Ta'a Tabarak Ta'ala, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim, Al-Rahman, the forgiving, the merciful. This is our Lord, Tabarak Ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal says about Himself, Yurid Allahu an yatubu alaykum. Yurid Allahu an yatubu alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. So our Lord, Tabarak Ta'ala, as is mentioned by Imam Al-Hafid, Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala, our Lord has been decreed certain time and season and month and days and hours that he has preferred over other time and days and months and hours. Because Allah Azza wa Jal wants to raise the individual. Allah Azza wa Jalla wants to forgive the individual, as He said about Himself. Allah wants to forgive you. 
Believe in Allah, become a Muslim. Allah wants ease for you. So Allah Azza wa has decreed certain times and certain days and hours and months that the believers can gain nearness to their Lord, Baruch wa Ta'ala. And during that time, Allah raises the good deed so that a normal good deed is raised in level. And it is raised in, it is raised in, in, in reward. And Allah Azza wa did not only do that in the month of Ramadan, meaning that which we do in Ramadan, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in Sahih Bukhari, Man Sama Ramadan Iman and Wahtisaba, Ghufir Allahu Ma Taqadda Min Dambihi, who had the past month of Ramadan, seeking the reward. And with faith, Allah will forgive his previous sins. Allah didn't only do that. For the believer to reflect, Allah didn't only raise your level in the month of Ramadan so that you can gain names to him. In another hadith, the Prophet said, Man qama Ramadan iman al wahtisaba. Whoever stands in Ramadan. So in this hadith, whoever fasts Ramadan. In that one, whoever stands in Ramadan. His previous sins are forgiven. Did Allah only do that? No. Allah Azzawajal also has restricted the path of the shaitan to his service. So Allah doesn't only want to raise your levels and to forgive your sins and to pardon your faults, but Allah has restricted the path of the shaitan to the servant so that the servant can do what? So that he can be more vigorous and diligent in gaining nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا دَخْلَ الرَّمَضَانِ سُفْتِدِ الشَّيَاطِينَ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابِ الْجِنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابِ النَّارِ وَسُفْتِدِ الشَّيَاطِينَ When Ramadan enters, the doors of Jinnah are open, the doors of hell are closed, and the shayateen are shackled. So Allah Azza wa Jal has assisted you, has supported you, and gained the nearness to Allah. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal wants peace for you. Allah Azza wa Jal wants to forgive you. Allah Azza wa Jal wants to do what He has ordered you to do. And wait to forgiveness from your Lord. Allah has ordered you to do it. And Allah has assisted you in doing it. So compete in good deeds. As Allah said. So as a part of believer, the first and foremost understand the tremendous bounty that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed and blessed, has placed upon and blessed the servant with in this month of, of Ramadan. Indeed, the mere fact that we have lived and witnessed this month is a blessing from our Lord, Tabarak Ta'ala. And Imam Sheikh Muqbil, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, has mentioned this in one of his khutbah that he delivered while he was still alive, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He's mentioned this lesson. And he said, فَإِن فَإِنَّا نَحْمِدُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَىٰ إِدْرَاكِنَا رَمَضَانِ He said, Verily, we praise Allah, the Most High, the Most Gracious, for us reaching this month of Ramadan. وَإِنَّمَا تُعْتَبَرُوا نِعْمَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزِّ وَجَلْ Kabira, Liman Adalaka Ramadan. He said, and it is considered a tremendous blessing and bounty from Allah for the individual who has reached this month. And he said, Waqama bi haqqi. And the person who has fulfilled his right. And the person who has fulfilled his right. And this is one of the points that we want to discuss. 
the person who has fulfilled its right. And we'll discuss that later on, the Ibn Allah The issue of the individual who has reached the month of Ramadan, the mere fact that you have reached the month of Ramadan is a blessing from Allah. It is a bounty from Allah. It is a sign that Allah has done what's good for you. Because He has allowed you to reach this month. But it is upon you, for Allah has done His blessing, His bounty, Allah has favored you. But what is, what is upon you, O servant of Allah Azza To show you this lesson, and then we'll go on to what is upon you. Or from that which is upon you, because it's tremendous. I mean, the amount of things that is upon the servant is tremendous. But we want to bring some, some items for reflection. Another thing that shows you, before we go to the items of reflection, another thing that shows you the tremendous bounty that Allah Azawajal has blessed you with for entering this month of Ramadan, for reaching this month of Ramadan, is the hadith of is the hadith of the, the Sahabi Talha bin Ubaidullah, one of the famous companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this hadith is reported in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, and it is reported in other books, hadith and authenticated by Shaykh Al Albani Rahimullah Ta'ala. Talha bin Ubaidullah said, أن رجلين من بري قدم على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان إسلامهما جميعا from a particular area they had approached the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and these two individuals had entered into Islam these two individuals had entered into Islam at around the same time they had entered into Islam at the same time. فكان أحدهما أشد اجتهادا من الآخر. But one of them was more diligent in his Islam, in his practice. He was more diligent than the other. فغدا المجتهد منهما فاستشهدا. The one who is more diligent in practicing his Islam, he went out and he fought jihad. He went out and he fought jihad and he died as a martyr. Then the one who was less diligent in his Islam, who was not so sh- So we had two individuals, one of them, and both of them came into Islam at the same time. But one of them was very diligent in his worship and he went out to fight in the way of Allah and he died as a martyr. And the other one lived for one more year, he was not so diligent, he was not so strong, and then he died. Qabla Talha. Talha, the companion of the Prophet said, Qara'aytu fil manami bayna ana inda babil, inda babil jinnah, is ana bihima. And so Talha said, and this is actually took place, Talha said, then after both of them died, I saw a dream. And I was standing at one of the doors of Jinnah. And those two men, those two men were standing with me. فَخَرَجَ خَارِجٌ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَأُذُنَ لِلَّذِي تُوَفِّي الْآخِرِ مِنْهُمَا So someone came from the door of Jinnah, someone exited the door of Jinnah, and they gave permission from the last of the two men, the last one who died, who was the one, that was less diligent in his worship. The person exited from the door of Jinnah and they told the man who died last, who was the one left in his worship, they told him to enter into Jinnah. So he entered. Then, after some time, once again, someone came from the door of Jinnah and they gave permission for the one who died as a martyr to enter into Jinnah. So, the one who is less diligent in his worship, he entered Jinnah first. And then the one who died as a martyr, who was very diligent in his worship, he entered Jinnah second. 
فقال ارجع فانك لم تاتي لك بعد. Then the person came out of the door of Jannah and they said to Talha because Talha is dreaming. They said to Talha, go back, it is not your time yet. Go back, it is not your time yet. So Talha, when he woke up in the morning, he told the people what happened in this dream. And they were, they were astonished. They were astonished. So this astonishment and what took place reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they informed the Prophet of the dream of Talha. فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ أَيِّ ذَلِكْ تَعْجَبُونَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to the people, Why are you astonished? فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ هَذَا كَانَ أَشَدَّ الرَّجُلَيْنِ إِجْتِحَادٍ مِنْ مَشْتُ الشِّدَةِ They said, Ya Rasulullah, the reason why we are surprised is because the man, because the man who was more diligent in his worship and he died as a martyr. He died as a martyr. وَدَخَلَ هَذَا الْآخِرِ الْجَنَّةَ قَبْلَهُ And the one who is less diligent and less pious and less religious, he will enter Jannah first. The one who is not so diligent, he didn't die as a martyr, he will enter Jannah first. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَلَيْسَ قَدْ مَكَثَ هَذَا بَعْدَهُ السَّنَةَ the Prophet Sallallahu responded to them. Did not the one who was less religious, did not he live for one more year? Kalu Bala. He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, he did. The Prophet Sallallahu then said, Wa adraka Ramadan to Psalm. The Prophet Sallallahu said, so the one who was less religious, he lived one more year, correct? He said, yes. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, and he fasted, that means he fasted another, another Ramadan. So he said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَصَلَّ كَذَا وَكَذَا مِنْ سَجْدَةٍ فِي السنة. And he prayed more. In fact, he lived another year. Father of Ramadan. More. قَالُوا بَلَى In fact, it's true. قَالَ رَسُولُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فَمَا بَيْنُهُمَا عَبْعَدُ مِنَّا تَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ The Prophet ﷺ said, So between them is further than the heavens and earth. Between these two men, the distance is further than the heavens and the earth. Why? Because this individual reached another Ramadan. So subhanAllah, this is, as Sheikh Mukhbir Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned, this is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, that an individual, just the mere fact that you have reached another Ramadan, is a blessing from Allah and a bounty from Allah. So much so, if an individual died one year before you and he was diligent and he died as a martyr, your bounties are greater. Your blessing is greater because Allah has allowed you to reach another month of Ramadan where you have fasting, where you have standing, where you have salah. So this is greater. This is greater for the servant. So indeed, by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we have reached that time. We have reached the moment of Ramadan. It is upon the believers to realize the bounties that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon you for just reaching this month. So what are you going to do, O oh servant of Allah Azza wa Jal? As Shaykh Muqbir Rahim Allah Ta'ala mentioned, لِمَنْ قَامَ بِحَقِّهِ For the person who implements its right. To the person who gives it its just due. We're saying that, we will move on to a few items of reflection. And those items is, just because you reach this month, O servant of Allah, just because you reach this month does not mean that you will be from those who are forgiven in this month. Yes. Hear it and reflect on it. Just because you reach the month 
does not mean that you are from those who will be forgiven in this month. It is upon you. As Sheikh Mufu said, لِمَنْ قَامَ بِحَقِّهِ For the person who implements his right, it's upon you to implement the right of this month. So just merely reaching it doesn't mean that you're forgiven. doesn't mean that, you know, it, it, it's over. No, you have to struggle. You have to strive. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal has tied up the shafi. Now strive. Now struggle. Now wait. فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَةِ وَثَابِكُ وَثَارِئُ وَإِنَا مَغْفِرَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Race towards forgiveness. Compete in good. That is something important for the believers to understand. Because we have the hadith of the prophet, the hadith of Allah the Messenger, where he mentioned that so the Prophet of Allah is going to mention and the Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam atani faqala man adrakaha ramadhan falam yugzal lahu wa dakhala al-nar fa ab'adahu Allah fil amin fa kuntu amin the famous hadith that we all are aware of when the Prophet وسلم, said that Jibreel approached him, and the hadith is authenticated, wa billahi alhamd, by Shaykh al Dani and Shaykh Muqbal and others. The Prophet وسلم, mentioned that Jibreel approached him and said, The person who reached you, like us, everyone who's listening, we reach him. The Prophet وسلم, said, The person, Part one, Jibreel said, the person who reaches the month of Ramadan, but he is not forgiven, and he enters the hellfire, and Allah distances him, Allah rejects him, and Allah rejects him. Jibreel said, said to the Prophet, say, Amin, and Amin means, O oh Allah, answer the call. Oh Allah, answer the supplication. So the Jibreel said to the Prophet, say, Amin. The Prophet said, Allah, whatever the said, Amin. And then we know the other two, the Prophet, the Jibreel said, whoever reaches his parents, meaning he's alive and his parents have been alive, and he does not show them kindness, and he dies, he enters the hellfire, may Allah distance him, say, Amin. The Prophet said, say, Amin. To the end of the hadith. But the point of the hadith, is that Jibreel alayhi salatu salam mentioned us whoever reaches the month of Ramadan. I'm not saying that the rest, so he's not forgiven. No, because inshallah we will be from those. The Ibn Allah ta'ala, we will try to be from those who are forgiven. But we have reached the month of Ramadan, that's the point. We have reached the month of Ramadan. So Jibreel alayhi salatu salam mentioned Whoever reaches the month of Ramadan, and we, everyone who is listening to this lecture, has reached the month of Ramadan. So what's the second part of the hadith? فَلَمْ يُغْفَ اللَّهِ But he is not forgiven. Is it? We've definitely reached the first part of the hadith. We've reached the month. But is it possible that some of us will also be in the second category of this hadith? They will not be forgiven? Yes, it is definitely possible. Yes, it is possible. So that is an encouragement, my dear brothers and sisters, that you have to struggle and strive. That you have to struggle and strive in this month. Because just reaching it does not guarantee that you will be forgiven in it. Just reaching it does not guarantee that you will be forgiven in it. And because of that, the scholars, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala, they were very cautious and they were very fearful of their actions not being accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. And this was mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Mu'minun, where Allah Subhanahu wa says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَقِيمٌ رَاجِعُونَ Those who, notice what Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ They give. 
What is upon them? Whatever Allah Azzawajal orders them to do, they give it. They implement it. They fulfill it. But what is their state? وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَتُمْ But their hearts are in a state of fear. Their hearts are in a state of fear. And لَهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Because they are returning to their Lord Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha رضي الله تعالى when she heard the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم she asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is it the person that drinks and the person that feels is it the sinner? Because here their heart is still. Is it the sinner? She asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala as it's mentioned in the Bukhari she was an faqiha she was an extremely knowledgeable female. لَمْ تَسْمَعَ شَيْءٍ لَا تَعْرِفَهُ إِلَّا سَعْلَ She did not hear anything that she did not understand except that she was questioned. So Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها when she heard the statement of Allah عز و جل, she went to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is it the one that feels, is it the one that commits fornication and adultery? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لا, لا يا ابن الصديق, no. Oh, the daughter of Al-Siddiq, yani the daughter of Abu Bakr. No, it is not those people. But it is the person that fasts and the person that says that they are fearful that their deeds will not be accepted from Allah Azza wa Jalla. But they are fearful that their deeds will not be accepted from Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is the way of the believer. The way of the believer, yes, we understand. It is a ni'mah from Allah Azza and we have entered into this month. And we have witnessed five days of this month. But we also understand that we can, it's possible that you are not forgiven. It is possible that you are not forgiven. Because what? Because you have not fulfilled the rights of the month. Because you have not fulfilled the rights of the month. So one of the points of reflection is that the believer should not only do the action, but he should also worry whether or not it is accepted from him. As is mentioned by Ali ibn Abi Talib, and we reported in the Hulia of al awliya by Abi Nu'aym al-Astahani, that Ali ibn Abi Talib, said, he said, you should be more focused on whether the action is accepted than the action itself. So it's not just the fasting. It's not just I stop. It is not, it's very important we understand it. It is not just I stop uh, eating, I stop drinking. It's not only that. He said, you should be focused on whether the action is accepted. Am I doing it in the proper manner? Am I doing it sincerely for Allah? So be focused on the acceptance of the action, not just the action itself. So, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَقُودْ عَمَلٌ عَلَى التَّقْوَى وَكَيْفَ يَقُودْ عَمَلٌ يَتَقَبَّلٌ فإنه لن يقل عمل على التقوى فذلك if the action is done فذلك نعم فذلك نعم فذلك if the action is done based on taqwa it will not be something small it will not be something small in my mind it is based on taqwa so notice what Ali Ilan Ali bin Abi Talib is focusing on he's focusing on if the action is based on taqwa and how the action is performed. And how the action is performed. So once again, كُونُوا لِقُبُورِ الْعَمَلِ أَشُدُّ إِحْتِمَامًا مِنْكُمْ بِالْعَمَلِ Be focused and give great attention to whether the action is accepted even with the action itself. Even more so than the action itself. And uh, it's also mentioned by al mutawakkil that Abu Huraira, this is mentioned by Imam uh, Ahmed Rahim al in his book of Zuhud, that Abu Huraira, 
واصحابه كانوا اذا صاموا جلسوا في المسجد بعد ابو هريره and his companions, whether from the companions of the Prophet or from the Tabi'een. كانوا إذا صاموا جلسوا في المسجد. If they were fasting, they would remain in the masjid. They would remain in the masjid. قالوا, they said, وطحروا سيئاتنا. We want to purify our bad deeds. They want to purify their bad deeds. They want to clean their place. So they don't want to involve themselves in actions that would diminish their fasting. They do not want to involve themselves in actions which diminish their fasting. And this is something very important for the believer. You have to say, is it accepted by Allah? It is not mere eating alone the food and leaving alone the drink. And, and, and no, it's not really that. It is preserving your fasting. It is making sure it is sincere. It is making sure it is accepted by Allah. It is making sure it is something pleasing to Allah. As a just, that's very important for the believer to, to reflect upon. This side was also mentioned by Sheikh Tal al Fuzan Habib al Ta'ala in his Mujaris Shah Ramadan al Mubar. In one of his lessons, the Sheikh Habib al Ta'ala, he said, that the fasting brings about good character, it brings about taqwa, it brings about fear of Allah. And obviously, because Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aminu kutiba alaykum usiyyan, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablukum, la'allakum tattaqo. Oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you, as it has been prescribed for those who came before you, to establish taqwa. So Shaykh Sarah Fuzan Habib Rata is mentioned the Fawaid of Siyah. That it brings about the character, al-akhlaq, al-tajibah. For you sahil alayhi fi'al al-ta'at, and it makes it easy for you to be righteous good deeds. But to jannab al-muharramat, and it makes it easy for you to abstain from uh, forbidden deeds. When you awwiduhu al-ihtan ila al-muhtajun, and it conditions you to be good to those who are in need. And many of the Fawaid, he mentions many Fawaid. Then what is the Sheikh said about the fawaid, about the benefits of fasting? He said, وَلَكِنْ يَنْبَغِ أَنْ يُحْلَمَ He said, but it is important to know أَمَّا اسْنِيَامَ لَا يَأْتِ بِهَذِهِ الْفَوَاعِدْ وَهَذِهِ اسْتِفَاتُ الْحَمِيدَ إِلَّا إِذَا صَانَهُ سَاهِبُهُ عَمَّا يُخِلُّ بِهِ he said, but it is important to know and befitting to know that fasting does not bring about these benefits. The benefit of what? Good character, taqwa, forgiveness, uh, uh, it conditions you to do good deeds, it conditions you to abstain from haram, and all of this. It conditions you to know your gain, it conditions you to put the pleasure of Allah above and beyond your pleasure, all of that. It, but it does not come with these fawaid, it does not come with these benefits, and these good characteristics, except if the person protects it from any type of sin. Except if the person protects it from any type of pollution. Then he says, فَإِنَّهُ بِمَنْزِلَةِ اللِّبَاعِ It is like clothing. إذا صانه صاحبه وحافظ عليه سطره ووقاه من الحر والبر وأصبح وأصبح لباسا ضافيا على جسمه وجمل صورته وحيئته. He said, it is like clothing. Fasting is like clothing. Right? And it is. When we pass the taqwa, then it is خير. When I put it like that, and the clothing of taqwa, it is the best. So fasting is like clothing, it's like something you protect yourself from. Right? The Sheikh said, the clothing, if you protect the clothing, it covers you. You take care of your clothing, it covers you. And it protects you from the heat, it protects you from the cold, it covers your body, it beautifies you, it makes you appear nice. The clothing. 
right? Why is that you have to alayhi? But if you do not protect your clothing, وَتَعَرَّدَ مِنْ خُرُوكِ وَالشُّقُوكِ And your clothing now becomes ripped, becomes torn. وَتَعَرَّدَ مِنْ أَوْصَاقِ It becomes dirty. What, what happens if your clothing is ripped, if it's burnt, if it's ripped, if it's torn, if it's dirty? فَأَصْبَحَ لِبَاسٍ غَيْرَ مُفِيدٍ So it's not beneficial clothing anymore. It is no longer beneficial clothing. وَأَصْبَحَ لِبَاسٍ مَخْرُوطًا مُشَقَّقًا مُتَوَافِقٍ مُتَوَقْتَقًا Now your clothing has become torn, ripped, dirty. لا يجمل صاحبه It does not beautify him. ولا يقيه من حر ولا من برد It does not protect you from heat nor from, from cold. ولا يستر أوراته It does not protect your pride. It does not cover you. كذلك الثيام إذا لم يمكن إذا لم يصله صاحبه أما يخرقه ويدمسه فإنه لا يفيد صاحبه إلا التعب والجوع. He said that is exactly like that. If you do not protect it from being torn, from being uh, blemished, it is no longer beneficial for you. The fasting is no longer beneficial for you. And the only thing that you The benefit from the fasting is that you are tired and you are fatigued. That is, that's how the fasting becomes. That's how the fasting becomes. So this is something which is upon the believers to reflect over. It is not just that we have reached the month of Ramadan and uh, I'm saved from the hellfire and my sins are forgiven and Allah has shown mercy to me. Yes, Allah has done that. But what have you done? Is it possible that you have corrupted, you have polluted your fasting? Indeed, it is possible. Indeed, it is possible. So that's why it is upon the believers to continue to struggle, to continue to race, to continue to be diligent and vigorous in protecting their fasting from anything that can blend blemish. Likewise, from the things which I advised myself Uh, and my brothers and sisters is that we have to feel that we are constantly even though we have reached the month of Ramadan and this is the month of, the month of mercy and the month of forgiveness we have to constantly feel that our ibadah is not enough we have to constantly feel that our ibadah is not enough And that was in the ayah that I mentioned earlier in Surah Al-Mu'minun. And they did that which is upon them. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِبَتُهُمْ That their hearts are still in a state of fear. Their hearts are still in a state of fear. And لَهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُمْ Because they are turning, because they will return to their Lord, to Barak Atana. So this is what we need to understand. We need to understand that we are doing, but we shouldn't feel that we've done something major. We shouldn't feel that, no, I've got it, Allah, it's over, it's accepted. We should not feel that. It's possible, my dear brother and my dear sister, that you fast this month because, that because you're doing something wrong, because of your ill intention, because of your lack of sincerity, you get no reward. It's possible. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that in the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu salam, that we've already mentioned. Jibreel said, فَلَمْ يُغْفَ اللَّهِ So he, but he's not forgiven. He reached Ramadan, but he's not forgiven. So we understand. So we understand that a person can do something, but it's possible he gets nothing from it. And we have this in authentic, the authentic sin of Abu Lahab al-Nasir, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We've already mentioned the Hadith of Jibreel. But you also have in the Hadith of Ammar bin Yasir. Hadith of Ammar bin Yasir, which is reported in the sin of Abu Dawood, who authenticated by Shaykh Razani, فَإِنَ اللَّهَ تَعْلَمْ عَدُوْ إِلَّا الرَّجُلْ لَيَنْصَرَ وَمَا قُتِبَ إِلَّا عُشْرُ صَلَاتِهِ وَتُسُعُهَا وَتُمِنُهَا وَسُبْعُهَا 
وصدسها وخمسها وربعها وثلثها ونصفها وحديث عمار بن ياسر وبطابع صلى الله عليه وسلم said that a man prays and he needs his salah and he only gets a tenth of it recorded for him or a ninth or an eighth or a seventh or a sixth or a fifth or a fourth or a third or half so he has fulfilled the obligation he has fulfilled the obligation of prayer he's done that he's fulfilled the obligation of prayer just like we're fulfilling the obligation of fasting but are we getting the most that we can obtain from the month of fasting are we getting forgiveness of our previous deeds will we, will we be from amongst those who enter the door in Jannah called Ar-Rayyan for those who fasted will we get all of these fawaid from fasting taqwa the taqwa establishment of the taqwa of Allah will we get all of that the fact that we get nothing from it because we have not fulfilled the right of the fasting because we have not fulfilled the right of the fasting so that's why we go back to the statements of the Sheikh Sheikh Salim Fawzan Hadith Allah Ta'ala that Qiyam ma yakti bihadhi al-fawaid wa hadhi sifat al-hamida illa idha sanahu sahibuhu amma yukhimu bihi that fasting would not bring about these fawaid forgiveness of sin entering the paradise mercy entering the door of jinn called ar-rayyan taqwa all of this fasting does not bring it about it is not a guarantee except that to fulfill the rights of the fasting so it is upon the believer to feel that you can do more it is upon the believer to feel that you can do more it was mentioned by the salaf this issue of always feeling that you can do more and all feeling that you are deficient this issue is mentioned by many of by many of the salaf and from amongst them الحسن البصري الإمام حسن ابن أبي الحسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى. He said إن المؤمن والله ما تراه إلا يلوم نفسه على كل حالاته. He said the believer, I swear by Allah, you do not see a true believer except that he blames himself in all instances. Except that he blames himself, he feels that he's deficient in all instances. يختفرها في كل ما يفعله فيندم ويلوم نفسه. He feels that every action that he does is small, and everything he does, he regrets. He regrets. I'm going to explain that. فإن الفاجر ما يمضي قدما لا يعاتب نفسه and the sinner the sinner is one that continues he continues walking he continues in his life لا يعاتب نفسه he does not bring himself to account he does not regret his action he does not bring himself to account and this is something which is important and this is why I'm mentioning that we have to reflect we have to that we're not doing enough. We have to feel that we can do more. And before I explain that, before I explain that, uh, with the statement of Ibn Abbas, I'm going to check some of the comments on that, on that statement of Hassan al-Basri, which is mentioned in Iraq of Al-Mahtan by Ibn Qayyim Rahim Khatab. Check some of the comments said that. He said, الَّذِي يَحْمِلُ الْمَرْءُ الَّذِي يَحْمِلُ الْمَرْءُ عَلَى عَدْمِ الْمُحَاسَبَةِ الشعور بالكمال شيخ صالح فوزان حبيب الله تعالى said what makes the person not bring himself to account what makes the individual not bring himself to account not feel that he can do better not feel that there's room for improvement what makes the person feel that way عدم نعم الشعور بالكمال What makes you feel like that is because you feel that you're perfect. You feel that you're perfect. Once you feel that you're perfect, there's no room for improvement. 
في سلف يمشي في سلف وزال سلف فعلى المرء دائما أن يشعر بالنقص حتى يقوم بمحاسبة النقص. He said it is always upon a person to feel that he is deficient. And by doing that, he will bring himself to account. He will seek improvement. He will try to do better. So this is very important for the believer. That you need to feel that you're not doing enough. But if you can do more, you need to feel that you have not وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ You have not given Allah his, all of his life. So that you can do more. I need to do more. I need to worship more. I need to pray more. I need to do more. I need to do more istighfar. This is important for the believer. But you have even from amongst the scholars, those who explain that even if you feel that you've done a lot, you will still blame yourself. You will still blame yourself. It's mentioned that Imam Atta, Ibn Abi Rabah, from the students of Ibn Abbas, he said, uh, Ibn Abbas said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تَنُومُ نَفْسَهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Everyone would blame themselves on the Day of Judgment. Everyone. Everyone would blame themselves on the Day of Judgment. تَنُومُ الْمُحْتِنُ تَنُومُ الْمُحْتِنُ نَفْسَهُ أَلَّا يَكُونَ إِزْدَابِ إِحْسَانٍ Even the person who did good. Look at this. Allah. Even the person who did good would blame themselves and wish that they had, they had, they, they, they would blame themselves, they, they feel that they should have done better. They would blame themselves, why didn't I do more? I, I was doing good. But why didn't I do more? Why didn't I do more? وَتَلُومُ الْمَسِيعَ نَفْسَهُ أَلَّا يَكُونَ رَجْعَ عَنْ إِسَاءَتِهِ And the one who did wrong, the one who wronged themselves, they would blame themselves and say, why did I return for my sin? They will blame themselves and say, why did I not return from my sin? So the reality is, the believer always blames himself. The believer always feels that he's deficient. But let it be known that you don't feel that you're deficient so that you stop worshiping Allah. And you discontinue your path and your strive to please Allah. No, you don't do that. What you do is, I need to do better. I need to continue. I can't give up. I can't give up. We know that our, the promise of Allah, our, our, we know that the promise of Allah is true. In the wa'ad Allah haq, فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنِّي وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغُرُورِ Really, the promise of Allah is true. So do not let anyone deceive you with regard to your Lord. And do not let the deceiver, yani the shaitan, deceive you. So this is the way of the believer. Continue, strive, struggle, be vigorous, be diligent in pleasing your Lord. But know, but know that you're still deficient. But know that you're still deficient. And this is an indication that your actions, the even in life, are accepted upon Allah. This is an indication that your actions are accepted. This is an indication that you are from the sincere. But in that in do we not have the likes of Umar ibn Khattab, Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhu, after the death of the Prophet, uh, or even upon, uh, even during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Umar ibn Khattab went to Hudayta ibn al-Yaman, casted sick at Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hudayta ibn al-Yaman, who was the individual that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told the specific names of the munafiqun. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam told Hudayf ibn al-Yaman the specific names of the munafiqun. Umar ibn al-Khattab, Thani al-Khulafa al-Rashidin, the second rightly guided Khulafa. He went to Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and said, I ask you that Allah, did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam name me to be from amongst them? Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam name me to be from amongst the hypocrites? What is he doing? What is Umar ibn al-Khattab doing when he says that? He's belittling his deed. He's considering himself to be from amongst those that maybe Allah doesn't accept it from them. 
So he wants to strive. He wants to struggle. He wants to dedicate himself. He, can, he wants to please Allah. Even from amongst the men that Allah is with just, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed that he's in Jinnah, even while he was still alive. So what does he do? He does not make ta'zim of his action. He does not feel that his actions are superior. He does not feel that his actions are tremendous. He, he misses his own actions and he feels that he can continue, that he can continue to strive. This reality was mentioned by Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. When he says, Alamat, and he mentioned it in the Gadi Ustana Kim, Alamat Kubun al Aman, Tikaruhu, Wastik Maluhu, Wasuvuruhu, Tikal. He said, A sign that your action is accepted is that you belittle your own action. You hold them to be, you hold them to be nothing. I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm praying, I'm fasting, but I'm not doing enough. You hold them to you belittle your own action in your heart. You don't tell other people that, because this is a sign, this is pride, it's sure. But to yourself, you belittle them, you don't hold them to be much. Then he says, حتى إن العارفة لا يستغفر الله عقيب طاعته He said, even to the extent that the one who knows, the person who understands this reality, he makes istighfar to Allah Azawajal at the end of his deed. I mean, once you do something, you pray, you fast, you make istighfar to Allah. Why? Because you feel that you have not given it, it just do. You feel that, like we mentioned in our hadith of Ammar, the reality in Sunan Abi Dawood, we understand that I can leave this prayer right now. I can finish my prayer. I can finish this day of fasting, but I did not give much of it. Why? Because I did not give it its just due. Because I did not do it in fear. Because I did not do it speaking in the face of Allah as a So notice Ibn Qayyim, it's for a sign that your actions and your deeds are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you belittle your deeds. You remain in the state that you can do more. Mentally, from your heart, you remain in a state that I'm not doing enough. If not, and this is Ibn Qayyim mentioned, so the one who understands this reality, he makes a stick for after he beats. He doesn't feel, he doesn't feel that he's done a lot, it's over, I've done it, I've defeated it, I'm perfect. No, he doesn't feel that. And because of that, Imam Ibn Rabbi Ta'ala, the Shunna, subhanAllah, how the Salaf were when it came to their ibadah. Imam Ibn Rabbi Ta'ala in his Muta'if al Ma'arif, in his book about uh, the different seasons and the bounties of Allah, he said that the Salaf used to see one another on the day of Eid, that the Salaf used to see one another on the day of Eid, and if people were, were rejoicing, if people were rejoicing, they would admonish them. Not to say that you can't be happy, but to rejoice so much, how do you know that Allah has accepted your deed? And just because you finished the month of Ramadan, and this is what Ibn Rajab, I'm paraphrasing what he said, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he said, but this is not the action of a person who feels that is, is fearful of Allah maybe not accepting his deed. And we understand smiling, we understand uh, happy because this is a day of age for the believers, but to rejoice so much, how do you know that Allah accepted your deed? How do you know that Allah, just, you can be from amongst those, as you mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, you could be from amongst those, man adraka ramadan salam yukhtan lah, you can be from those, yeah, my, my, my dear brother. Reach Ramadan. You reach it. Not this way. We're in the fifth day of Ramadan. But what? You're not forgiven. So this is something that is mandatory for the, the believer to understand. It's mandatory for the believer to understand. And when you, when you, when you come to that reality, it allows you to work towards Rectification. It allows you to work towards rectification. One of the things that we will mention in brief for the believer to rectify is the affair of Toba in the month of Ramadan. Is the affair of Toba in the month of, of Ramadan. As we know that Toba has conditions. 
As is mentioned by Imam al nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, and many others. But Imam al nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, in his Riyadh al at the beginning of the chapter of Tawbah, he says, قال العلماء التوبة واجبة واجبة كل ذنب من كل ذنب فإن كانت المعصية بين العبد وبين الله لا تتعلق بحق آدمي فلها ثلاثة شروط. The scholars have mentioned that repentance is obligatory from every sin. And if the sin is between the servant and Allah, it does not have it is not related to the rights of any other person. There are three conditions. And we know the conditions. Uh, and and the person stops the sin. And when them ala fi'liha that he regrets the sin. And ya'zima alla ya'uda ilayha abidin that he makes the firm intention never to return to the sin. This is what we want to talk about. This this issue of Tawbah. Um and we know that Tawbah is logic. Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amin, tubu ila Allahi tawbah tal nasuha. Allah Ta'ala says, O you who believe, repent to Allah with sincere repentance. So it's an order from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa tubu ila Allahi ayyuha al-mu'minun la alakum tuqtahun. Allah Ta'ala says, and repent to Allah, O you believe it, so that you may be successful. So repentance is obligatory. Obligatory. But there are conditions, my dear brother. There are conditions, and unfortunately, many of us, even in the month of Ramadan, we do not fulfill the conditions of Toba. We do not fulfill the conditions of Toba yet. And you put it on that stop committing the sin. The first condition, we have to stop committing the sin. But those from amongst us that are committing sins that involve uh, social media, uh, uh, contacts, different contact, people, environment. Some of us have not stopped the sin. We've only forced the sin. Some of us, our sins are related to contact. We have certain individuals when we're in their company we stay. So what do we do for the Ramadan? We tell that person, listen, I'm going to block off for a few days. It's Ramadan, I can't speak to you for a month. But we still keep the contact number on our phone. So you haven't stopped the sin, you paused the sin. Some of us, our sins are related to movies. We have hundreds of CDs with movies. We have our account on different uh, uh, social media software, Netflix and this, that, that, where we watch our movies. So we stop watching it for the month. But you haven't stopped the sin. You haven't closed your account. You haven't discontinued your account. You haven't erased the name, the contact numbers of the people who call you to sin. Your, 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 your friends in crime. You haven't deleted their number. You haven't blocked them. So you haven't stopped the sin. You've caused the sin. So you haven't fulfilled the condition of Tawbah. And we forget, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ we have, we, we forget, nothing is hidden from Allah, on the earth nor in the heavens. Who are the you saw from the arham Allah has shaped you in the wounds of your mother. If Allah had access to you, which He does, the Bark of Allah, in the wounds of your mother, then He has access to your heart. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُمْ وَمَا وَمَا تُخْبِ السُّدُورَ He knows the, the deceiving eye and that which the heart conceals. Allah knows what's in your heart. If Allah as a God knows what's in your heart, your intention, the day that the, 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 the secrets are exposed, you do not have any might nor any power. You do not have any might nor any assistance, nor any support. Every secret is exposed. That which is in your heart, your intention, is exposed. It's shown for all of the creation to see. So Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't know that you haven't erased your friends in, in evil. 
Allah doesn't know that? How could you think that Allah doesn't know that? How could you think that Allah doesn't know that you have not discontinued? That's told. Told it is that you stop the sin. You discontinue your account. You close your account. You delete and block your contact. People that call you to evil, you stop it, you delete it, you block it, you erase it. That's Tawbah. Not that you delete some of the, 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 the bad software, the sinful software on your computer, but it goes to your, your recycle bin and you keep it in your recycle bin so after Ramadan you can go to it and reestablish it. That's not Tawbah. That is not Tawbah, my, my dear brother and, and my sister. And another reason why that's not Toba is because the third condition, He makes the firm intention never to return to it. You haven't made the firm intention never to return to the sin. So this is something that you have to reflect over, my dear brother and, and my dear sister. Is that in the month of Ramadan, it has been prescribed for you so that you can establish taqwa. Allah wants to forgive you. Allah, Allah wants to have mercy upon you. But you, it starts with you. So the person who fulfills the right of Ramadan. And from the rights of Ramadan is told us in the surah. It is sincere told us. From the conditions of Toba is that you stop. You make the intention never to return. You make the intention never to return. You don't cause the thing, my dear brother and my, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. So this is the reality as it relates to Ramadan. There are many fawaid, there are many merits, there are many benefits, there are many virtues. But if we don't fulfill it, if we don't fulfill it, it's right. And it's right is not just uh, uh, leaving alone drink and leaving alone water and leaving alone relations with our uh, our wife. That's not the right of Ramadan. It is greater than that. You had in the Sahih Bukhari, had on the third of Abu Hurairah, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, من من يدعى قول سور والعمل فيه فليس لله حاجة أن أن يدعى طعامه وشرابه. Whoever does not lie. Whoever does not stop false testimonies and lying, then Allah does not need you to stop your food and your drinking. Allah does not need that. That is not the purpose of Ramadan. The purpose of Ramadan is not to stop eating and drinking and sexual relations. The purpose of Ramadan is to stop the evil deed. Look at that hadith. Whoever does not stop false testimony and acting upon false testimony, lying, fabricating, then Allah does not need that you leave your food and your drink. What does that inform us? That informs us that the purpose of Ramadan is not leaving alone food and drink and sexual relations. The purpose of Ramadan is greater. And that is, it is a time for us to focus on abandonment of our thing. Complete abandonment. We block it. We make the firm intention from the depth of our hearts that we won't return to it. This is that which I have to uh, remind my brothers and my sisters and before them, myself up in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah Azawajal to send down His mercy and forgiveness. And we ask Allah Azawajal to make us from those who He has saved from the hellfire. And we ask Allah Azawajal to make us from those who obtain all of the merit of the month of Ramadan and that we continue after Ramadan to race toward the forgiveness and the mercy of our Lord, the Baraka Ta'ala. Indeed, Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahbihi wa tasleem al